Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to use the diesel crate, which is an ORM for Rust and allows you to connect to Postgres, MySQL, and SQLite. So let's just get right into it. I've created this project that is a to-do app. Basically, it allows us to create a to-do and then mark it as complete. And this is stored in Postgres. So you'll have to set up a Postgres server and also install the diesel CLI if you want to use this and install the Postgres client. If you don't want to do all that, I've created this Docker compose file and it sets up a database for you and specifies all the credentials. Then it also creates a CLI that you can drop into that is a Docker container and it specifies the database that we also set up in this database container. If you don't want to use Docker, then just install all of that on your own and also run the cargo install diesel CLI and specify the Postgres feature. Let's look in our cargo.toml. So I'm using Chrono, which is to manage the dates in Diesel. And then for Diesel, I'm using the Postgres feature along with Chrono for managing date times. Then I'm just using Surday for serialization and deserialization. In the Diesel.toml file, we need to specify a file where it'll output the schema. And this is the schema that you write when you create migrations, which I'll show you later. If you look in the main.rs file, we use the models file along with the schema file. And the models file is where you actually create the models that match the migrations that you wrote. So now let's actually just set up diesel. We can do Docker compose and run the diesel container. This will drop us in and also set up the database. Now we'll have to set up diesel. Do diesel setup and this will create a migrations folder. This is where you write the schema for your database. Now that that's done, let's actually go and look at our migrations. It creates this initial migration that creates the diesel migration table. If we actually want to create our own schema, then we'll have to create our own migration. So to do that, we'll do diesel migration generate, and we're creating a to-do app, so create to-dos. Depending on how you have Docker set up, we'll also need to give permission to the migrations folder. So to do that, to change the ownership from the Docker user to your current user, like that. Okay, so now let's go back and look at the migrations folder. It's created this new migration that we can now put in our own SQL. I've gone ahead and written some of my own. So this creates a to-dos table with an ID that's a serial ID, meaning it increments. And then it has a text, which is a text type, and it can't be null. Then we have a done, which is a Boolean that defaults defaults. And we have a finish timestamp when the to-do is marked as done. Then a timestamp that keeps track of when the to-do is created. And this keeps the time zone on the timestamp and it sets the default value to be now with the time zone of UTC. Let's create our down migration, which is when you're wanting to revert a migration that you ran. So it's just the opposite of the up migration. So in this case, we just do drop table to-dos. Let's go ahead and run this migration with diesel migration run. And this creates the to-do. So now let's go into the database container and connect to the database. We do that with docker exec and then get a interactive terminal and specify the database diesel container. Now that we're in the container, we can do psql and the user, which is diesel. Now I've connected to the database. We can select from the to-dos there's nothing in it. And we can see a description of the table. Nice, now let's actually run our main.rs file and do some stuff with it. So if we look in here, we run this create function. And this takes in a Postgres connection. And this is just a established connection to Postgres from the environment variable that we set in our Docker compose file. We use this new to do struct that's specified in our models file. And if we look in this models file, you can see that this struct derives insertable, meaning this struct can be used to insert data into a table. Then we also specify the table name as todos. We run the diesel insert into function and specify that we want to use the todos table. And that comes from the schema file right here. It generates and matches the schema to your database. Then we specify the values, which is the new todo struct that we're using to insert into the database. We run this with get result, specify the struct that we want to insert, which is the to-do struct, and pass along the database connection. Then we can actually print out the value that was inserted. So let's run this with cargo run, and you can see it returns the to-do that was created. 
with done being false and the finish timestamp to be in the none because it was optional. Let's see if it showed up in our database with select all from to do's and it did. Very nice. Now let's actually update this. In our finish function, we get the to do's and we want to do some filtering on the to do's table. So we get the to do's table and we specify a filter where we want the to do's and get the done column and specify it must be false along with and where the to do's ID column must be equal to one. Then when we're actually updating, we do the diesel update function, pass in the filters we've specified. If any rows match this filter, then on the to do's table, get the done column and set it equal to true. Then get the to do's and finish timestamp column and set it equal to sum since it's optional and the chrono UTC now date time. Then run this function with the get result match on the to do struct and pass in the Postgres connection. This should return a to do struct that is the updated row value. Then we just print it out because we've derived debug. If we actually run this function, let's see what we get. And you can see it returns the to do that we created and it's updated to be done as true and with a optional timestamp to be the time when the update happened. Let's see if it showed up in our database. And nice, it did. I highly recommend looking at the docs for diesel and you can see that there's so many different options. Basically anything that you need to do it'll probably be listed on this list of functions. So it's just a matter of searching through the docs and finding what you need. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope you were able to find this introduction useful.